Love from Al Kajimia. By Dion Robinson. Alternative Multimedia Productions LLC reserves all copyrights. Disclaimer. The characters in this book are fictitious, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Assad and I returned to the United States around 7 in the morning. Once we were stateside, we had to check in with customs. Since I did not have a passport or applied for an American visa, we were sent to Customs and Barter Protection Office at the Wayne County Airport Authority. Assad and I had to go through a checkpoint search. The inspections officer threw away all my personal miscellaneous items that is considered to be contraband. All my makeup and perfumes were thrown in the trash. The only items I was allowed to keep was clothes, jewelry, and other keepsakes. We were asked questions about our marriage. How long we knew each other? When did we get married? Did we have sexual relations? The immigration officer did not hold back any of the questions. Assad and I explained that we're two individuals who wanted marriage. Assad explained that he was introduced to Zuleika by a marriage matchmaker. We felt that we were a good fit for each other, so we got married. That was our explanation. We presented our marriage license. The immigration officer asked for our passport and my birth certificate. We gave them their demands. We waited for another five hours before we were taken to Romulus Medical Clinic for a mandatory physical exam. I was given immunization shots while Assad was asked a series of questions about his tour in the Middle East. After I received my medical screening and background check was cleared, I was granted a temporary green card. You two are free to go. The green card is good for a year. I advise you two to get an American marriage license, the immigration officer replied before leaving. Around 6 in the evening we arrived at Assad's home. I immediately removed my hijab and kicked off my shoes. Mashallah, I was very impressed with where Assad lives. It was much larger than the run-down apartment that I used to live in. He had a two-bedroom apartment, a medium-sized living room, kitchen and a dining room. It was large enough for five people. I broke down in tears and cried. Assad came over to me and comforted me. What is the matter? All this feels like a dream. Why do you say that? Just a few days ago, I was suffering from a claustrophobic feeling. Now I feel that this just a dream. Well it's not. Your home is with me. Whatever you need you just ask me. I'll take care of you, Assad replied. When we settled into my new home, Assad showed me around. He showed me two rooms that were used for work. One place he said is where he edits videos, and the other one was a green screen. Doing online videos was his hobby. The last room was the master bedroom which was a descent size. I know this place is not big enough, but I am working on buying a house. Assad replied. If you like, there is the bathroom to freshen up. You can go first. Are you hungry? A little. All right, I'll make you something. He smiled at me. Tomorrow, I will take you to meet my parents. So soon? I replied. The sooner, the better. I hope they would like me, I quivered with nervousness. They will, my parents are pretty easygoing. Assad smiled as he reassured me. Okay. I replied before I retreated into the bathroom. Everything seemed fine when I took my shower. With the water that cascaded down my body, I finally felt the serenity I had been longing for. Lost in the serene moment, I forgot I had no feminine products. I looked around and saw a black bottle that was labeled, African Shea Butter Vanilla Cream Body Wash. Lathering with the body wash, I can feel my once dry and chafed hands become soft.
Once I was finished, I got out of the shower to dry off. Before I could cover myself, Assad ran into the bathroom. I screamed with embarrassment, but calmed down once I saw Assad. I am sorry. Assad replied as he turned around to give me privacy. Assad no need to be shy. We are married. Assad chuckled with embarrassment. Right, Assad replied as he looked at me. What is going on? I inquired. Crap, my parents are here? Why? I don't know, they just showed up. You have to get dressed. They are waiting to meet you. You told them you got married. I had to. They saw your hijab on the couch in the living room. Hurry and put on some clothes. Assad replied as he quickly left out. After getting dressed in whatever decent clothes I brought with me, Assad and I sat with his parents in the living room. His mother's name was Khadija, and his father's name is Amar. Amar was in his late fifties. His skin tone was a shade darker than Assad. He was at least six feet and ten inches in height and had a beard that was graying. However, he concealed the color by dyeing his beard with henna. That gave it a dark fiery hue. Khadija's skin tone was a shade lighter than Assad. She's five feet and seven inches in height. Her hair was covered by a beige hijab that complemented the navy blue abaya and gladiator sandals. The conversation about our marriage was awkward. Assad's parents were trying to find the question to ask about our wedding. As for us, we tried explaining why we got married. It was weird explaining because it was like telling a love story from a movie. My mother gave us a smile of disbelief, and his father had a stern look as he examined our marriage contract from the courthouse in Sadir City. I am going to make some coffee. Katija darted up and went to the kitchen. I believe the awkward silence was making her just as nervous as Asad and I. It looks legit to me. He replied as he sat the marriage licensing documents from immigration on the table. Assad, you should have told us that you were getting married. I did not know I was getting married. It just happened. Please explain. He asked. Assad told him everything. It was the longest seven minutes of our lives. Then Amar said something that pricked my interest. Did you get remarried so soon because of Suofia? Amar asked. No, I did not. Who is Suofia? I asked. Suofia is my ex-wife. Assad explained nervously in Arabic. I wanted to ask more questions about his ex, but it was not the time for that. Son, do you know what you are doing? Not really. You should have consulted with me before doing something like this. Dad, I did not have time to think. Zuleika needed help, and the only option I had was to marry her and get her out of the country. So what is next? We are married and we talked about trying to make this work. Well, at least your intentions were good, Amar replied. It felt like an eternity before his mother returned with a tray of coffee. We all took a cup, except Assad. Amar and Khadija took a cup and added sugar and cream. I offered the cup to Assad, but he refused as he explained he was not a hot coffee person. Well, at least you have married again, Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, she is pretty too. His mother replied as she winked at me. The only thing I have to say is that we have a wedding in Walima. I don't think that is necessary, Umi. She is right. Since Zuleika's citizenship is temporary, it's best to have the marriage validated in the States, Amar agreed. Also, a wedding is perfect for introducing Zuleika to the Muslim community. His mother replied. I can't afford it right now. My trip across seas nearly tapped out my bank account. My husband replied. We can have something small. We'll take care of the cost. It will? 
Assad's father replied with a surprised look. Yes, it will be our wedding gift. I guess we can do something, Assad replied. After the awkward meeting, it was time for Assad's parents to leave. As his mother was giving farewells, she looked at us. I expect you two for dinner tomorrow, Khadija demanded. End of chapter 4